This is the day the Lord has made, and the microphone is working really well. <laughs> we are grateful that you are here this morning. There is a wonderful video. We want to make sure to talk to you this morning about the cloud. And so there will be all kinds of cloud things that you are seeing this morning. We are glad that you're here. Let us pray. Holy God, we are so grateful to be here. Help us better understand the ways you're working in this place and working in our lives. In your holy name, amen. Watched him running down the aisles Children's time Sunday morning The preacher asked them who they loved They all smiled And started pointing to them all from the kindergarten class each and every one just become a cloud of witnesses that would see them through the All right. Well, while we try to fix that, are you trying that again? Let's try. Watched him running down the aisles. Children's time, Sunday morning. The preacher asked them who they loved. They all smiled and started pouring. To the mom, the dad, the teacher from the kindergarten class, each and every one just become a cloud of witnesses that would see them through the Well, you know what, guys? You are surrounded right now by a cloud of witnesses, and that's what that song is about. We're going to stand up this morning and worship God. Apologize for technical difficulties. So we're going to share this time of response from Psalm 119, verse 9 and 11. How can young people keep their paths pure? By guarding them. I have sought you with all my heart. Don't let me stray from any of your commandments. I keep your word close in my heart. So that I won't sin against you. Amen. Well, y'all, uh, this morning, we're so grateful to have you here today. And I don't want to skip if a uh, pastor wants to share anything else for a welcome. I know that was a little jarring with the video. No, we're good to go. All right. So today we are gathered together because of God who has called us, each one of us. If you're here today and you say, I don't know what it means to be a Christian, I pray that you'll hear these songs and that you'll draw near to our great God so that together you can be a part of that cloud of witnesses. Amen. All the people said amen. We're going to put our hands together on this first one.
today that we can know Jesus. When we say amen, we're saying it is well. We're saying so be it. Whatever God says for my life, that's what I want. Amen. And you know, we're surrounded today, as I was saying earlier, by a great cloud of witnesses. Look next to you and see one who God has redeemed. All God's people are called to be a part of the great cloud of witnesses. And God is calling us to encourage each other. Amen. So we're going to sing a, call called, a song called Greater. The thing about this song is it talks about struggles that we have. And, you know, a lot of times we can say, ah, that's okay. But, you know, it's not that we're saying that's okay as in good. It's because we're saying our God is greater than anything we go through in this world. Amen? We can be encouraged in Him. Let's sing together.
Because they're here, Lord. They haven't forsaken the gathering of the saints, Lord. And Father, we need each other, but we need you more than anything else. Lord, teach us now in your word, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Welcome to worship. We are glad that you're here. My name is Pastor John. Pastor Lauren is on vacation, and I'm glad she's soaking that up 
So we look forward to seeing her next week as she'll be gathering with us as we'll be on a new preaching schedule that week uh, as we begin this new sermon series that is going to be about um, Richard Foster's book, Celebration of Discipline. And in that book, we'll be talking about all kinds of wonderful things about how to draw closer to Christ. So Pastor Lauren and I will be both preaching every week starting next week. We'll be switching back and forth. So I will start be preaching uh, the 8 o'clock and 11 o'clock next week. She'll be preaching the 929. And then in that following week, we'll switch. Uh, so I'll be, I'll be preaching 929, and she'll preach 811. So we'll be going back and forth like that. If you are interested to draw closer to Christ, unless you have everything all settled in your life, everything is fine and dandy, you have no problems, no fears, no uncertainties, no anxieties, anybody fall into that category? Anybody? If you do, I need to talk to you after worship. <laughs> if you fall into that category, we definitely need to talk to you and see you at this information session today at, 11, at 1230. Or on Wednesday at 6.30, as we talk about what it means to draw closer to Christ, it is Jesus and spending time with him that makes a difference in our lives every day. And this book, Celebration of Discipline, helps us make sure, gives us the tools of how to do that, not just by studying it, by challenging us to practice it, to figure out how we're going to spend time with Jesus, and there's all different kind of ways to do that. So we'll be walking through that together. I look forward to seeing you during those times. Uh, I want to make sure to let you know as well, there is some information in your bulletin. Please sign that information as far as your attendance. If this is the first time that you were here, we are certainly glad that you were here. Please sign that up. There is also some necklaces we want to give you. If you are the first time here, please let us know. We want to give you that gift uh, so that we can make sure that you are here. Wonderful. We are glad that you're here. Uh, we are glad to worship together. Uh, that being said, let's continue our time. Uh, with passing and sharing God's word of peace. So stand up as you're able and greet one another in the name of Christ. Good morning. Let us remain standing for the prayer and the um, reading of the scripture. Father God, open our hearts, our minds, and our ears as we hear the scripture today. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus and throw off everything that hinders us and entangles us in sin. Take today's words home with you and ponder how to incorporate them into your, our own lives. Be with Pastor John as he speaks to us, and in your name we pray, amen. amen. And our scripture today is from Hebrews 12, verses one and two. Therefore, since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders in the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. Oh. Well, there's only two verses, so I figured there was only two screens, you know? <laughs> For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you, God. Thank you. I mixed up. I'm used to praying afterwards. Please be seated. Thank you, Lynn, for making that happen, continuing to read that final piece of scripture. We are grateful for the live stream folks that are here with us, and you cannot volunteer on live stream today, but I need two volunteers, two bold volunteers, 
two people that consider themselves physically fit. I need you up here this morning, right up here and right up here. All it takes is two. We'll stand here for a long time. We need, oh man, we got, oh wow, look at this. <laughs> All right. Thank you for the bold, the bold, physically fit gentleman up here. Amy was just about to come. Amy, if you really want to come, you can. You're good? All right, so since you guys are both physically fit and you're in good place, good situation, right? I need you to start jogging in place. If you need to go down a little bit, you can. There you go. Start jogging. You're looking good, looking good. All right, keep it up. Keep it up, gentlemen. Now, these guys... <laughs> <laughs> so how's it going? It's going okay thus far? Not bad thus far? All right, these guys are running. As they're running, as they're jogging in place, I'm going to talk to you. Today we're talking about a race. And our author of our book today, we're not exactly sure who it is. It may have been Paul, but it may have been somebody else. In this race, they were talking about how we are going together in this race. And we have to have perseverance or endurance now, for those that talk about endurance, I don't really have endurance a whole lot, especially when it comes to running or other kind of physical activities, but I like to do them. So if you see me out on the Rockwater Park out there, I'll, I'll jog and I'll sometimes walk. But I really look forward to this ninja thing that's going on out there, really looking forward to hitting that. How are you guys feeling? We're feeling it. Feeling okay? <laughs> it's warming up, warming up? Okay. All right, now you guys can cool down a little bit. Go ahead and stop a little bit. Now I got a little, another test for you. Hold on. That was the easy part. <laughs> All right, Mike. You got it? Put that on your back. <laughs> Clay, you can put that on your back. <laughs> How did it feel there? Feels like his vest when he walks sometimes. Clay, you doing okay? You need help? <laughs> yes, he does. Are these, are these backpacks light? No. <laughs> they both have weights in them and books. Are you guys ready to jog some more? All right, here we go. Here we go. Start jogging. These guys are physically fit, right? They're good in shape. They got some endurance, and they're set for this race. Talk faster. Talk faster. You want to keep? <laughs> <clears throat> There's really no point. Just want to make sure to see you guys do this. So our author is talking about this race that's going on, and he talks about this weight that quite often is carried. Now, what is this weight? What is it? Sin. So the race that we're talking about is really life. The weight that is being carried is sin. Now I'm guessing these guys liked it a whole lot better when they were not carrying this weight. Am I right? No, no, no. We're going to be talking about him in a little bit. And that ain't you. So we've got this weight that we're carrying, says this author of Hebrews. But he says we've got to shed this weight that clings so closely to us, this sinful life that we have that we say everything is fine, I'm doing okay. But guess what? It, because it clings so closely to us, we have to say this ain't right. This is not good. And I need others to help me. I need Jesus to help me cling to get rid of this. So when you shed it, go ahead and shed this, gentlemen. Go ahead and button that thing up, you don't mind, you don't mind. It's pretty heavy. Now I'm guessing you feel a whole lot better, am I right? Yes. <laughs> Clay's face is priceless, that's for sure. Mike, you feeling better? Yes. All right, so you don't need to run again. I think you guys are in good shape. Let's give these guys a round of applause. Thank you, gentlemen. If you want to feel the weight of these backpacks at some point today, please come and check them out. They are not light. So as we see, again, this image of this race that's being put forward, 
this race of life that we are on, this race that we are clinging so closely is what scripture tells us. The sin is clinging so closely to us. In many ways, it becomes a part of us. And we think it's, it's something that we can't shed. It's something that we can't get rid of. Jesus tells us otherwise. That we got to get rid of it. And when we get rid of that weight, my, how the journey is much nicer. And these gentlemen can attest to that, I believe. And I believe there are others here today that can attest to that fact. But it tells us on this race that we're on, this journey that we're on, we are not alone. And it tells about this cloud of witnesses. You see this image up here right now, this cloud. Quite often when we think of cloud, we think of the information technology. And we break out our phones or our tablets and we start tapping into that cloud. There's save files and retrieve files. All that information is there. I'm here to let you know it's not some ethereal thing. It's a server that's in somebody's business that's where your information is stored, okay? Let me go ahead and break that down. I know everybody's sad because of that. But the cloud we're talking about today is not that kind of cloud, not information technology kind of cloud. It's a different kind of cloud. It says we're surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. Now, this cloud of witnesses is referring to chapter 11 of Hebrews, And if you look back at chapter 11 of Hebrews, there are 22 different groups that are laid out. 15 of them are personal names, such as Moses, David, Samuel. Those folks in the Old Testament that we're quite familiar with. And then it lists up other kind of groups. It says like prophets. And then there are other kind of things that just says others. And it lists out some of the things that they did. 22 different groups it lays out because of their faith and the things that they were able to do. But it also says that they were not able to see the whole picture. They weren't able to see how their faith came to fruition. They weren't able to see all the things that God was going to do because of them. So one example is Abraham. Abraham was given a covenant with God. He says, God says, I'm going to make you as numerous as the stars in the sky I'm going to be your God. You're going to be my people. I'm going to give you this land to your, to your ancestors. And Abraham says, I don't even have a kid. Are you kidding me? How is that going to work? Now, we know the story that Abraham gives birth initially or eventually to Isaac, who is the promised child of that covenant. But that's the only child, again, that we understand of that point And then it becomes a huge, huge, huge group of people years and years later. But Abraham doesn't see all of that. He doesn't see it come to fruition, but he's told to go and follow, to have faith. And so he runs that race with God. And he and others are lifted up there in chapter 11. But for us in particular, as we read this list, sometimes we read that list and we're like, I have no clue who these people are. What difference does it make in my life? I mean, yeah, I've heard of Abraham, Noah, something about a boat. I mean, something like that. I've heard of that guy. But I mean, who are these other people? Quite often we can read this list if we go back to, and I encourage you to read Hebrews chapter 11 to better understand who these cloud of witnesses are. Let me tell you about a different cloud. It's incorporated in that same cloud, but that cloud is not actually listed here in Hebrews chapter 11. It's part of my cloud of witnesses. And what that means is people that have impacted my faith, that have made a difference in the journey that I'm on and the race that I'm on. And it begins with my parents. My mom and dad taught me what it means to have faith, bringing me up from a little child, helping me better understand what it meant to follow God every day. Then I went off to seminary and I met this guy named David Heinemann. He was the campus pastor at, at, the coll- or excuse me, at the college that I was at, and he impacted my faith. And then eventually I met my now wife, who name is, whose name is Karen, and she certainly impacted my faith. And then later on, I end up going into uh, getting involved in all kinds of different things, and there were other things, other people in my life when I first became a pastor. Ronnie, who was my first senior pastor, impacted my faith. Keok. And Bishop Young Jin Cho impacted my faith. That's just a small list 
of the people that impacted my faith in the ways that I've been walking every day. And then when I was serving also, where did my book go? I left it over here. When I was serving in Powhatan, where I, where I was serving before coming here, I was impacted by this guy named Richard Foster. Now, many of you may have heard of this guy, but he's the one that wrote this book called Celebration of Discipline. He's written multiple books. I've never met this guy. But this guy is certainly in that cloud of witnesses that has impacted, impacted my faith. Because I realize the significance of this book is not just simply words. It's not something for me to simply study and say, wow, yeah, that sounds great. I mean, yeah, if you actually did like fasting and praying and like solitude and you spent time with God and if you did all that, I mean, if you did those things, that sounds great, but I'm not going to do those things. Why would I do that? Richard Foster helped me understand that it's not only important to study these things, but also practice them. And when I did the combination of both, my life was transformed for the better. To spend more time with Jesus. To be able to hear him more clearly for what God wants me to do, how God wants me to act. What kind of things God wants to change in my head and in my heart. Richard Foster himself, in this introduction to this book, talks about at least 15 or 16 people in his life to help impact his life and his faith, to help him write this book. They too are part of that cloud in his life. I want you to think about your own cloud. Who's surrounding you in this cloud, in this race that we're on? Who has impacted your faith and your life as you're on this journey? My guess is there's a list that you have in your head. And my hope is I get you thinking a little bit more fully about who those people are. Now, one of the things that we also think about on a race is it's a competition. Who likes to win? Anybody like to win? I know there's some serious competitors out there that do nothing but win. The whole goal is to win. I'm here to tell you, you can't win this race. You, you like to hear that, didn't you? Especially all those folks that say, I want to win. You can't win this race. There's somebody that's already won. Can you guess who that is? His name is Jesus. And it ain't Mike. <laughs> it ain't Clay. His name is Jesus. Jesus is the one that has won this race, and we are the one that's following him. We are the one that's following him day in and day out. But we can be there together. We can be surrounded together in this race as we're going foot by foot, path by path, recognizing sometimes we're going to fall. Sometimes we're going to need to help stop and pick somebody else up. Sometimes we got to make sure that they can go. Sometimes we need to make sure if they cannot take themselves that we gather others together and say, hey, we need to carry this person for a little while. That's the race that we're on. But none of you are going to win. I'm not going to win. And in many ways, that makes it a horrible race. But it also makes it a fantastic race. Because we're in this together for the long haul. This is not just a sprint. This is a long haul race that we're in together. Knowing that God is on our side. Knowing that God is the one that is pointing us in direction. Taking us the direction we go. Knowing that that cloud of witnesses. Let's lift it up there in Hebrews chapter 11. That they're surrounding us. Knowing that there are others in your life and in my life that has surrounded me, that keeps surrounding me. It's our job as a church to keep that going. To keep surrounding and supporting one another. To keep recognizing the things that cling to us so closely. That sin especially that says, that's a part of me. I can't let go of that. It's our job to say, you need to let go. That is weighing you down. You got to bring it to Jesus. Lay at his feet. Because trust me, the race is going to be a lot more smooth when you do that. Let him take it. Let him take it. Lead. Let him lead you. Let us as a body go together in this race. Because it is so much better. It is so much better. That's the cloud that we're talking about. 
but in the midst of that cloud, quite often when I read this passage, that's usually what I think about, just about that cloud that's surrounding me. There's this wonderful image that I have in my office, and I invite you to come and check it out anytime you so desire. But there's an image in there in my office of this cloud of witnesses. And it was this, this picture was given to me by my parents. And every time I look at this, I am reminded that there is a picture of a, a pastor who's preaching on a Sunday morning. At least that's what I'm guessing it's on a Sunday morning. But it's a preacher who is up there talking to the congregation, and he is surrounded by others. And those others are looking like this cloud. They have these kind of these, these images that are different. They are not embodied. It's a wonderful image. It's a wonderful reminder that I am never alone as I'm standing here before you. But I'm really never alone even when I leave this place. And the same is with you. You're never alone. There are others who are surrounding you that this Bible helps us understand. There are others in your life, like my grandfather and my grandmother, who are no longer here with us. But they have impacted my life in incredible ways. And I recognize that they now are part of this cloud of witnesses that have gone before us. That I can celebrate. But in the midst of that cloud, it is easy for me to forget that I need to be looking to Jesus. Not just my grandfather. I need to be looking to Jesus, not just you. I need to be looking to Jesus, not simply Richard Foster. Jesus is the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, is what Hebrews chapter 12 says. And what that means is he is the one blazing the trail. He is the one that's victor over all this. And where does that victory lead? Where does it lead? Let me see if my ears are working. Anybody talking out there? I think my ears are working. Where does the victory lead? It leads to the cross. And it leads to death. Jesus loved us so much he was willing to die for you and for me. That's where this race ends. That you and I must die as well. We must die to self and be raised with Christ. And Christ is going to take us on some awesome journeys. But all of this is making sure that he is the leader, that we are the follower. We're doing this together. You're not alone. You're never alone. There is this great cloud of witness that is surrounding you and supporting you, encouraging you, and challenging you. Let go of the sin that clings so closely. Let go of it because the race is going to be a whole lot better. And my hope is that we can do that together with each other, for each other as we continue to share and build God's kingdom in this awesome journey of faith. Amen and amen. amen. This morning we have a wonderful time that we're going to continue of celebration and joys. We have something that's happening tomorrow, which is, what is it? Everybody's excited about that, but I know that it's also a weary kind of heavy burden as well. I know I've certainly been feeling it for my children as I'm like, man, this is a little heavy. Oh, do they really have to start school already? Others are like, oh, yeah, they're starting school. (laughs) And maybe a combination of all that in between. And so this morning, I want to invite all the kids who are going to be starting school tomorrow. I want to invite all the teachers. I want to invite all the custodians. I want to invite all the bus drivers. I want to invite all the folks that are helping prepare food. Any staff that is part of those schools, I want you to come forward and I want you to stand right over here. Because we're going to be praying over you. All the students that come up, we also have some tags that we're going to give you as well. Just as a wonderful reminder of all the things that God is doing in your life. So come on up. Those of you that are live streaming, we encourage you to pray as well. We certainly need you to pray for all these folks here. Keep coming, keep coming. All right.
All right, keep coming up this way. We can fill up this little spot right here. We'll fill it all up. Keep coming. We want to make sure to leave space. We got some more kids coming from the, from the back. All right. We got a good group. Keep coming in. Fill up, fill up this space here. Keep coming in this way. Excellent. All right. Great to see all you guys. Very cool. Almost all in. All right, I want everybody to look up here at all these folks, but I want you guys to look out there to those folks. Recognize as you begin this time of school, which starts tomorrow, you're not by yourselves. None of you. All of you are surrounded by these people who are praying for you and are going to be there by your side helping you if needed. But also this God that we worship who loves you so much, it says, I'm going to be with you every step of the way. So if you're tired, I'm going to give you strength. If you're uncertain, I'm going to help you. So that's what we are reminded of. That's what we are praying for today. I want you to reach out and put your hands on somebody's shoulder <clears throat> as we pray for each other. Let us pray. Holy God, what a blessing it is to be here today, to see this place filled with your people. We give you praise for this idea and this wonderful reality of the cloud of witnesses Help us to remind us of that this week as these, as these kids and all these students and all these teachers and all the people that are staffing these schools get to work. And as things happen tomorrow, give them this sense of assurance, oh God, that you are with them. Give them this sense of assurance that there are others, family and friends that are helping them each step of the way to be with us, oh God, as we as a church surround and support all of these endeavors in school. In your holy and precious name we pray, amen. amen. Awesome. Are oh, you okay there? Nice. All right. For all the kids, we've got some tags we're going to make sure to give you. So the adults, if you want to kind of make your way back to the seat, all of our kids, we're going to make sure to give you some tags. So stick around, kids. Now we got some singing to do. Amen. Boy, that was good. God is going to finish the work he's begun in us. Amen. We need to build one another up as fellow witnesses of our great God and encourage one another. Let's sing the song, Greater Things, Our God is Bringing Us to Greater Things.
take our time, I want to share with you some joys and concerns in our congregation. We certainly want to pray again for all of our schools that are starting, all those who are involved, parents included, because parents feel it uh, one way or the other. There's all kinds of complications, but also joys in the midst of that. We also want to lift up Sandy. Uh, we, I got word uh, that she is in the hospital at Culpeper. Her husband, Don, that continues to surround her. She was battling sepsis uh, at UVA for a little while, and now she's back here in, in Culpeper, and we're glad of that, continuing to heal. We had a death in our congregation this, uh, this past week on the 7th of August. Anne died. Her funeral will be at Fountain Sun on the 14th, uh, this coming Wednesday at 11 o'clock. We certainly want to pray for El Paso and Dayton and the challenges they still, they'll, they still face and the shootings that took place there. Definitely a difficult time. We praise God for Brant, one of our um, persons in the military connected to our congregation who is back from deployment. He is living now in Colorado with his family. They are expecting a new baby in September. So all kinds of joys for their family. We give praise that Patrick is back in California after spending time with family for the horrible, joy, horrible time of, of uh, grieving his father's death. But we want to continue to pray for um, Linnea and her family and the challenges they face. We also want to lift up uh, Edward and his family uh, for, for Maggie. And we continue to pray for God's guidance in the midst of all the things that we're going through. That being said, let us pray. Holy God, we need you. We need you to come forward in the midst of all the things that are going, for, going on. Our lives are complicated, O oh God. Our lives are filled with so many things. And we know, O oh God, that time is a, probably the best and most precious commodity that we have. And so we ask, God, that you would help us to figure out how to spend more time with you in the midst of a busy schedule, in the midst of a culture that says we can't have time, we don't have time to spend with you. Help us to turn aside from that, to say, yes, we do. We need to spend time with you, O oh God, so that we recognize the difference that you make in our lives so that we can build your kingdom. We praise you so much for this cloud of witnesses that surrounds and support us. We praise you for this cloud, O oh God, that we've lifted up just today. And we pray for all those who are grieving. We pray for the hurt and the challenges that people are facing in their health. We lift up our lives, O oh God, that we would be a benefit and a gift to others so that others see you through us and all that we provide. We give you thanks for this time of worship and the ways that you are changing our lives by being here. In your holy name we pray, amen. I invite the ushers to come forward for our offering. We're doing an offering a little bit different, so offering will be collected, and then it will be brought forward to be presented and prayed over after it is collected this morning. So come on up, ushers.
Pray with me. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you so much for uh, creating us, for calling us, for uh, surrounding us with, uh, with family and, and, and folks that um, uh, are just our witness and help us to grow closer to you. Father, we pray. You bless us so much, Lord. We pray. We give these, these gifts back to you, Lord, just a portion of, what, uh, of the blessings that you give us. God, I pray that you would just uh, bless these, that you would uh, use them, uh, that you would give us direction and um, help us to do your work here in Culpeper and in the world. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, part of my cloud of witnesses is my daughter, Annalise, who's going back to college this coming week. So... She's leaving a spot here, and if anyone wants to join the cloud of witnesses of the worship team, we'd love to have you. Amen. We're going to sing this new song called There is a Cloud. I'm going to invite Mason to come up. Every 
God is doing incredible things in this place, reminding us today of the cloud of witnesses that surrounds us, not just the biblical witnesses, but you and I. We are witnesses for one another in this journey, in this race of faith. And my hope is you will recognize the importance of your life and in mine as we surround one another, looking to Jesus, who is the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. And now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, amen.